I want to talk a bit about being Canadian because Brian is an interesting segue for me because Brian from North Country yeah. received pronunciation into that kind of culture, lives in New York, mm -hmm. America, works in Canada. So there's, I'm And then lived in California. Ultimately. And then lived in California. Is there a Canadian style? And I say that by reflecting, looking at an American style that we are very exposed to in terms of mm -hmm. expectation of acting, of mm -hmm. design, of dialogue, of text. We look back to the UK, the English speaking mm -hmm. places and those expectations. Given the 40 years, mm -hmm. do you, what are, are we doing something different here? Are we stumbling? Are we finding something? What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I think we had some of the best actors in the world. I mean, maybe it's my taste, but you know, I've seen a lot of American work and a lot of it is full frontal. You know, certainly Broadway, a lot of it is full frontal. I go, wow, is, does it have to be that on the nose or... Um, so what is underlying the skills that you're seeing coming out in Canadian actors in a way that isn't New York, it isn't West End, it isn't Nottinghamshire, and it isn't Stockholm? What is it, what is it happening that's us? Humility. Towards the audience, the play, ourselves, whom? I think ourselves. I, 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 you know, we don't have a star system in the theater. We don't have a, you know, we don't, we're very, and we are collective creatures. I mean, we have, I guess we have theater stars, I guess, but, but uh, I remember I was once, I think maybe one of the last views I ever read back in 92 or something, I think Robert Cushman said about my candidate, she didn't enter like a leading lady, something. And I went, great. <laughs> and yet when Brian as Candida, because she's a, a, a minister's wife. But interesting say, that Robert Cushman would have that expectation mm -hmm. to notice its absence. Yeah. And then when Brian wanted me to enter as Amanda, he said, I want a leading lady entrance because that's who Amanda is. Because she walks into a room and says, everyone should look at me. That was difficult for me to do, but I did it eventually. But that was, that was something to acquire. You know, it's our curtain calls don't go on for 20 minutes. <laughs> you know, I think there's a, I think, I think there's a certain respect towards the craft or there used to be, I don't know, you know, I don't know. I mean, the world, and, and Brian wanted to be part of a repertory theater. That's why he loved Stratford. That's why he loved to work here, because he got a variety of uh, roles and, and doing great uh, works, and then would go do a new play somewhere and tour that. And so, um, so I think, I, I, I think there is a certain sensibility. I remember seeing my first Broadway show, and it was, um, I think it was Crimes of the Heart, or I saw Chorus Line 2, and I thought, I was recasting it with Torontonians. I thought, oh, well, that would be, Claire Coulter would do that, and Janet Amos would do that part. And, but I wasn't blown away, because I think I was supposed to be. I think I, I should have said, wow, I'm in New York, I'm on Broadway. And I thought, whoa, I, I, I've seen performances as good as that. You say humility. Where do you think, what's the source of humility? Well, heaven knows. Gee, the CRTC just put through <laughs> a recommendation that we get, you know, non-Canadian creators and actors will make us more attractive to international markets. Where do we get our humility? We get it from, you know, funding agencies, government agencies, you know. Luminato gets more money than any other, you know. What's the difference between humility and subservience? Uh, well, humility keeps you honest. Subservience means we're still at it. We're still trying. I'm up for a series, CBC series, about a Canadian book, about a Canadian story, iconic Canadian. The, the Canadian producers want me. The Canadian dir the director wants me. I'm having to be approved by Netflix U.S. executives. Yeah, there you go. There you go, right? And you go, well, and, and you know, it's also wording, it's language, right? For the arts, what do we use? We use subsidy. 
but when it's money given to auto industries or something else, it's used industrial supports. You know, uh, and I think we made a mistake in the '80s trying to be businesses and satisfy the governments with saying, "Look at our marketing plan. Look at we can make money. We can, or we can not lose money." You know, and I think. Why did we try to speak their language? Why haven't we got them to speak our language? Mr. Account, Miles would always say, Mr. Accountant, can you do a sonnet for me? Or, you know, um, because a self-employed artist, which we are, we are self-employed, we're off the grid. You know, we're little businesses unto ourselves. And, uh, but I think there's a certain, I don't know, I think we're a great balance between Britain and and uh, the United States. Certainly, you know, Kristen Linkletter and Patsy loved working with Canadians because there was a blend. There was an appreciation of tradition, but there's also a certain rawness and wanting to uh, push the envelope a bit. I sometimes wonder if we parallel Swedish actors, Danish well, actors. Well, I'm no? in love with Danish television yeah. and series, and uh, and also we're in the right hemisphere. I mean, you know, we understand gold, we understand, you know, oh, enjoy the summer. You know, I, you know, the bridge, you know, wonderful, uh, I, I can't get enough There's of There's a non-pretentiousness about portraying heroes, whereas there's a pretentiousness in other cultures about portraying heroes. Heroes. Right? Yeah. And our, we don't play the anti-hero, but like in the bridge and like in uh, Wallander and those kind of things and the girl with the dragon tattoo, the heroic figures are totally non-pretentious mm -hmm. and have the kind of humility and rooted in, yes, we are a middle power mm -hmm. and we are a small power and we have our stories to tell. We're not carrying yeah. these large ex-empire or current empire stories. And I think we're in love with the gray. There's the black and the white and I think we find the gray fascinating. Tell me more about the gray. Well, I mean, in the fact that, you know, it's not black or white. Um, it's a certain non-judgmentalness that I, <laughs> is that a word? Um, that we are all capable of the good and the bad and, and no one is one thing. And uh, that it's the subtleties and the intricacies and the contradictions, the contradictions. It's one um, person can be this, but can also do this. They can say this, but do that. Doesn't mean they're evil, doesn't mean they're bad, but they are complex. I think we're, we like the complexity of it. Our country is complex. Our history is complex. We didn't have a revolution. <laughs> you know, we, I think that also forms us. Uh, I think, um, and I think we're, you know, people for a long time said, oh, we're, li we're like New Zealand to Australia. I'm not, I don't know about that. But I know that we're certainly different because we speak English and so many cultural influences are coming at us. Uh, you know, if we were Quebec and we're speaking French, we'd have, you know, a very different society. You know, we'd have talk shows with us on them. <laughs> it played out in the Omar Cotter story. Yeah. The Harper government tried to make him black and white, terrorist, yeah. terrorist, terrorist, and the Canadians pushed back both institutionally and kind of from saying, no, he was a child soldier. Mm -hmm. And then the story of that young man became far more complex and yes. gray areas. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we, the Canadians embraced that story. I think so. You know? I think so. I think we, you know, it's the whole idea of, you know, also getting back to Shakespeare, the idea of disputation. You have to be aware of all the sides. You have to be aware of all sides. I mean, when he writes, he is man, you know, there's an article thinking of like Shakespeare, which was really interesting, I was reading the other day. Like you, Shakespeare is man, woman, black, white, Catholic, Protestant, Muslim, Jew. He, you know, he's giving you all sides. It, one of the most, you know, here was supposedly a Protestant who may have been a closet Catholic who wrote the most wonderful portrait of a Catholic in Catherine of Aragon in Henry VIII. Extraordinary, you know at a very dangerous time for Catholics. You know, so uh, it's, uh, but I think, I think we're akin to that. I, I think we like that. I, I think we, I think we, what's it called, you know? Pluralities and truths, you know? There are many truths, truths. 
We are more to. comfortable with pluralities. I think so. And I don't know why, but we are. And that's a strength. I think so. I think so.